Somebody brought out a map of the, the area that was badly affected um, by the Chernobyl disaster. Yeah. And then he uh, superimposed this area um, on a map of Japan with, of course, uh, the Fukushima number one power station as the center. Uh -huh. um, and what you see is what my friend said in, in his message, is that everything right up to the north of Honshu, so nearly up to Hokkaido, yes. and everything south almost down to Osaka would be very badly contaminated. Whether it would be evacuated or not, okay, that's, that's what would happen at the time. But I, I imagine people would not want to live there. So uh, what this means is that the, the current population of Japan, if they were able to, would either move up to Hokkaido, which as my friend says is, is, is a cold place, in the winter you don't want to live there without cheap energy, mm -hmm. or they would have to be going down to, to western and southern Japan beyond Osaka, which means down to Kyushu and maybe even Okinawa, but Okinawa is really quite small. Yes. Um, and and um, the, the emergency capital of Japan would be in Fukuoka, which is uh, the, one of the largest cities on uh, Kyushu Island. Um, and he also said that um, probably the reason why the Japanese government is playing the current disaster down is because if this happened, or if, if it was perceived that this was about to happen, it could lead to a financial crash of Japan and a world financial collapse. Yes. My mother-in-law asked me about the day before yesterday if I would go down and plow what I would call her kitchen garden, which is just outside her house where the well is, about one kilometer from here, just down a little hill, down where the paddy fields are. Yes. So I went down there dutifully yesterday morning at nine o'clock, and um, I said, okay, I'll plow this kitchen garden with the little rotary tiller. But, you know, people are talking about the radioactivity, aren't they? And she said, yeah, I've heard about that. And I said, well, are you sure you want to do this? And um, she pointed at the sky and she said, Tony, look at that cloud there. I can't just get on that cloud and go somewhere, can I? Yes. And that's the point, really. A lot of people here, um, because this is the countryside, a lot of people have lived here for a long time and they have their, their fields and their, and their paddy fields. And they, they, we, are, are just living here and we're literally eating the soil here. Where are we yes. going to go? Yes. On the other hand, a little bit more here, on the other hand, um, I've heard that there are organic farmers, maybe in this prefecture, who are saying, well, farmland, wherever I go, I can, I can work farmland, so I'm going to leave here and go somewhere else. Um, which is also an interesting point because a lot of people cannot just up and leave their jobs, can they? No, they And their can't. houses and, of course, their families and everything else. But it is actually extremely difficult to find farmland to work. I mean, if you were to come to Melbourne, they're covering everywhere with suburbs at the moment and the intention is to run bigger, new big cities with nuclear power, incidentally. Well, potentially there is about 5 million hectares of farmland in this country. At the moment, about 4.4 .4 million hectares are actually being used, but there's, there's quite a bit that can yes. be um, brought back into production. Um, the, the problem is that if half, the, half of Japan, basically northern Japan, all the way down to Osaka, is going to be contaminated and unusable, um, that means what? I, I should say roughly half the, the farmland in Japan is then going to be unusable, which is then going to exacerbate the, uh, the population and the, and the food problem, since yeah. Japan is importing 60% of its food already anyway. Um, as my friend said, Hokkaido is going to be very cold. Hokkaido is actually one of the areas which produces a lot of the farm, uh, farm produce, a lot of agricultural produce uh, in Japan. But um, if uh, fossil fuels become much more expensive than they are now, or if they become unavailable, um, I think it's going to be very difficult to continue agricultural production in Hokkaido as it is at the moment. Yes. So that really means um, if we had to uh, depend on the farmland that is existing in Japan now from, from Osaka westwards um, and southwards, I think Japan would be in a very, very 
serious situation indeed. It's already in a serious situation with, with being only able to, to provide 40% of its food calories at the moment anyway, but it would be then much more serious. We, we have started kind of half-heartedly to do a little bit of stuff, but now, now the ground is, is contaminated. Um, I think we're probably going to be um, a little bit negative about it, um, notwithstanding what my, uh, what my mother-in-law is doing. Um, we, we don't have to start doing anything with the paddy fields. We put down a little organic fertilizer about a month ago. We don't yeah. have to really do anything about the paddy fields now for, for about another month or so. so and the reason for that is that normally we would be transplanting rice seedlings uh, into the paddy fields um, around um, the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th of May. Um, but we've been told that the, um, that the small agricultural dam that we rely upon, upon for, um, for, for the water yeah. um, for our fields uh, was somewhat damaged during the earthquake on March the 11th and that we will probably have to put off planting those fields until a bit later, so maybe early June, maybe about a month, early June. Um, I told my wife that yesterday, and she said, oh, that's pretty good, um, because maybe it means the radiation will be a little better, mm -hmm. um, and actually we don't really like planting in, in early May. Um, there's a reason why we do it, but we don't really like doing it. Yes. Um, and it's actually better to plant in early June. So we'll be happy to do that then, you know, if we're still here and, and all the rest of that. Um, we've been growing um, kind, all kinds of vegetables out there um, for the last couple of years. Not a great deal. Um, I really... Um, this spring, I really wanted to do much more. I was gearing myself up to, to going out there every morning for an hour, an hour and a half, uh, to do whatever needed to be done, to double or triple our supply of vegetables from that garden. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure whether that's going to be realistic or even possible at the moment, but that's the kind of thing that we're doing. Um, I was um, listening to a program about uh, Chernobyl um, and what people are doing about the contaminated soil there. They're planting extremely deep-rooted plants. Ah, yes, right, yeah. okay. There may be all kinds of things that we'll have to think about and try in the future, assuming we're still here. Yes, Tony, I'm, I'm assuming that you are still going to be there. And um, what we can do is make lots of recordings. If you like, you can update people. Thank you very much. Look forward to people saying... Um, okay, we're going to say no to nukes, and at the same time, we are aware that as we do this, we are putting our first foot forward towards the society of the future in which we can basically remake the world the way we want it to be. Thanks, Tony.